comprehend is a biopesticide containing spores of Bavaria bassiana. In this section, we're going to take a look at fungal diseases of insects and their infection processes. There's a huge range of different fungi that infect insects. Um, fungal diseases that are common in humans, athlete's foot is one, ringworm for example, and then farmer's lung it can be caused by the aspergillus fungus. But there are very few dangerous fungal diseases that, that are of concern for, for humans. But for insects, fungi are really the nemesis. So we can see up at the top there, there's a cordyceps um, fungus which has infected an ant and this is a very clever biology that goes on between the ant and the cordyceps because ants are rather good because they're social insects at avoiding fungal diseases so the cordyceps has, has engineered if you like a, a way around the the ants defenses by taking over the bodies or the the, the almost dead bodies of the the ants that it infects and driving them to bite onto a branch above an ant trail below so that the cordyceps fungus can then rain the spores down on the ants going in and out of the of the of the colony and this is a way of preventing the uh, the ants from removing the 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 infected insects before the fungus has had a chance to transmit itself now in the other phot photographs you can see a bed bug that's been infected with Bavaria bassiana and a locust which has been infected, infected with a, a fungus called Metarhizium anisopleii. Now this external appearance of the fungal spores on the outside of the insect is only seen when you incubate those insects at 100% humidity. Okay, so under normal circumstances, insects that have been killed by a fungus don't generally display those spores on the outside of, of, of the body. It's only if you purposefully incubate them at 100% humidity that you can actually see this process happening. And this is a nice little technique that you can use when you go back to a, a, a job site where, you, where, where you've applied apprehend because you can collect dead or even live bed bugs and put them in a Ziploc bag with a piece of moist paper towel. So you would wet the paper towel, put it in the bottom of the Ziploc bag and then add the bed bugs to it. You zip up the bag and keep it at room temperature and if those bed bugs die of the fungal disease then you'll see those spores appearing on the outside of the insect. It takes about five to seven days for that to happen. So we've got, we call this the Ziploc bag test. You can get more details on our website using the, um, the, the web address that you see there in the balloon. So let's take a closer look at the fungal infection process. This is on the uh, left hand side, you can see the front leg of a bed bug and those are the two claws that it uses to be able to climb up vertical surfaces. And the little grey dots that you can see between the hairs on the legs are the spores that have been picked up by that bed bug by simply crossing a two inch barrier of apprehend. And this is a scanning electron micrograph, so it's a very high magnification. And if we zoom in even, even more, we can see the individual spores on the cuticle of the insect. And what you see there in that, that black and white photograph is the spores on the cuticle of a bed bug germinating and creating what we call a penetration peg to go down inside the bed bug. And we see that as in the diagram to the right, how the conidia or the spore germinates, produces this apressorium or penetration peg, and it moves down through the epidermis and into the hemolymph or the blood system of the insect. And that's how it grows. And it uses all of the, um, all of the nutrients from the blood inside the insect to sustain its own growth. So the, the, the bed bug basically dies of starvation and dehydration as a result of the fungus colonizing within its blood system.